world. My name is Ara, and I am a full-stack web developer with a passion for investing. Today I would like to talk about how to structure one of your investment accounts. So this is kind of an unplanned video, so I'm just kind of doing this on the fly because it was a thought of the moment. And I happen to like to make videos while I'm driving. So the way that I structured my daughter's investment account, it was in a 529 plan which has some tax advantages, um, as far as I understand, if she uses the funds for education in the future. And I kind of planned out how much I wanted her to have, and then I am investing accordingly. So I wanted her to have $200,000 by the time she's 18, and I kind of figured out how much do I have to invest to get her to reach that goal. So kind of a uh, backwards approach like not how much am I going to invest, it's more like how much do I eventually want to have and then how do I reach that goal. So about $400 a month will get me there. So the way that I structure her account is I want her to have dividend paying stocks because as far as I understand, uh, dividends can be very, very powerful when you are continuously getting cash put into your account and then you can use that cash to buy more shares of stock. So, I like her to have dividend paying companies. So, I would say out of the 10 companies or nine companies that she has, probably seven of them are dividend paying companies. Uh, off the top of my head, I can only think of two companies that she owns that do not pay dividends, Facebook and Google. So, what I would recommend is to have an equal amount of each stock that you want to own. So, for example, if you had $10,000 to invest, I would suggest buying 10 stocks, $1,000 of each. So, if Facebook is $150 a share, you buy six or seven shares of Facebook. If Google is $950 a share, you buy one share of Google. So you do this for every stock. Now if you have less to invest, then obviously you'd probably pass on Google because buying one share of Google would uh, put you over the limit. Let's say you only had $500 to invest in each stock. Then you just choose other stocks. But So over time, this account is going to go up and down in value and each individual holding, each individual stock or shares of stock that you have will go up and down in value. So periodically, perhaps once a year, you want to do what's called rebalancing. And rebalancing is kind of like just getting back to that $1,000 of each, uh, to put it in simple terms. Uh, actually, that's a bad way of explaining it. So if you started with $10,000 and you bought $1,000 of each, um, let's say the account rose to $12,000. So now, ideally, you would like to have $1,200 of each. $1,200 times 10 different stocks would be the $12,000. So rebalancing would be trying to buy a few more shares or maybe sell a couple of shares um, in order to get the value of each of your stocks to $1,200. So if Facebook, let's say it doubled in price and now instead of having $1,000 of Facebook, now you have $2,000 worth of Facebook, uh, theoretically you could sell $800 worth of Facebook shares and use that $800 to buy something else. Um, perhaps one of your stocks is down in value and you can use that $800 to buy something that's uh, down in value. So that's one way of rebalancing. Uh, let me know if I explained that clearly or if I kind of botched that up a little bit. Um, I do like talking, so if you ever have any questions for me, I'd love to explain things further. Um, another way of rebalancing that I kind of prefer over that method is to not sell anything but to only add on to the companies that aren't doing so well. So if Facebook were to go up 
40% and Google were to go up only 5% or go down 10% or whatever it is. So Facebook really exceeded uh, your one-year expectations and Google was kind of lagging. Then if you had some extra money, you might want to buy more of Google or buy more of some of the other companies that weren't doing so well in your portfolio and just not investing more money in Facebook, using your extra money to invest in the other companies. Another thing that I would suggest is if you have some extra money and you already have 10 or 12 stocks in your portfolio that you really like, and it's kind of good to have these uh, 10 or 12 stocks because you can kind of root for them the same way that you root for a uh, baseball team or root for a football team. Uh, you know, when Facebook comes out with their earnings, you can kind of like have fun, watch CNBC and, you know, cheer them on as they're, you know, announcing whatever they're earning. So it's kind of fun. But anyway, if you have extra money, I guess you could also, um, instead of buying more, more shares of more stocks, because it, it starts to get uh, overwhelming to uh, keep track of so many stocks, you could buy index funds with the rest of your money. So if your account now is valued at $12,000 and you want to invest another $5,000, maybe you could just stick all that extra $5,000 into an index fund. Or if one of your 12 stocks was down in value, then maybe you could invest $1,000 into that one stock, bring up the value of that um, stock in your portfolio a little bit, and invest $4,000 into an index fund. Index funds are terrific. They are very, very similar to mutual funds except the managers at these uh, brokerages are not actively managing these uh, portfolios of stock. They're not actively managing the funds, which is actually better because index funds charge much, much, much lower fees. And you don't actually need someone to manage an index fund for you. Index funds, on average, do the same approximately as mutual funds. Uh, mutual funds might even do a little bit worse because the fees that they charge bring down the overall return of the fund that you're investing in. So these are some of my thoughts of the day. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. As always, send me a message on Messenger or text me or leave me some comments on YouTube. I know a couple people were having trouble uh, leaving comments on YouTube, and I don't know why, but I will look into that. But I would appreciate some comments, and I love answering questions. So many of you get in touch with me on Messenger. I've had about 50 people ask me questions on Messenger, which I love to answer questions, so that's a great way to get in touch with me. So anyway, have a good day. Bye.